uh, I've Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special podcast today. I'm sitting with the Asteroid Protocol team. I'm with Red Phone Crypto. I'm with Donovan. And uh, we're going to learn a lot about uh, Asteroid Protocol. They've developed a lot in the past 10 weeks, and they're innovating on the Cosmos Hub. First, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Donovan. Donovan, can you please introduce yourselves? Uh, let everyone know uh, uh, what you do with uh, Asteroid Protocol and everything else. Yeah, sure thing. Um, hey guys, I'm Donovan. Um, I mainly uh, work on Astroport. I'm more one of the lead contributors on that side. But together with Red, you know, we we started the Asteroid Protocol in December. Well, I guess we'll get into that and launched it in January. Um, built the initial version. Uh, the team's grown a bit now, so uh, I'm not as involved as I was, but still very, very much involved. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of my role. Red Phone Crypto, uh, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. I am uh, Red Phone and been in crypto for every decade now. Um, my first love in crypto was the Silk Road, which um, was kind of like an eBay for, for trading anything. Um, anything from guns to or whatever in on this eBay like website that was powered by Bitcoin. Um so I was just involved in that idea. And um last year when Ord Balls came around on Bitcoin, I fell in love with inscriptions and wanted to see those kind of uh, brought to the to the cosmos. So I pitched doing that as a side project at Delphine Labs and they they said let's do it. And uh here we are ten weeks later. Um, just, just seeing where this, this ride will take us. Hey, you've been in crypto for a very long time. Do you mind sharing with the audience what the process of buying Bitcoin was back in the day, back when you were uh, first getting started? And why your name is even Redphone? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, when I bought Bitcoin, like uh, one of the easiest ways to, to get it in the early days was through this company called BitInsta. And um, they would ask you to send a money gram uh, out to California, and then they would just send you Bitcoin to your to your wallet address. So I had to print out this invoice from uh, BitInsta, and then I took it to a local pharmacy, um, picked up one of their red money gram telephones, made this call out to Cali, and they gave me a code I had to write down on this invoice. And I took that to the register, paid, and then waited a couple of days for for my Bitcoin to arrive. Um, so yeah, it was, <laughs> the industry is kind of a long way from, from those days of having this and money orders and waiting days for your transactions. But yeah, it's been fun to, to see it change and grow. That's, uh, that's, you know, amazing to hear because you hear all the time, uh, we still have so much of a ways to go, you know, before mass adoption, but hearing your story, just shows you how far we've actually came. So yeah, that's pretty amazing. Uh, I want to share one more little story because basically like a crypto storyteller, you've been around for so long, maybe even a historian, but you, um, a lot of my audience resonates with uh, XRP. A lot of us got involved in that coin early too. So tell them when you first bought XRP. I think that's a pretty cool story too, back in. Um... Yeah, I think that was, Shortly after I bought my Bitcoin, I, I discovered Ripple and yeah, so I was buying some in 2013. They had these kind of like precursors to Uniswap back then. Uh, RippleNet, I think it was called, or RippleGate, like these different platforms where you could, you could buy and sell it. Um, and back then they were also giving away XRP to the people who were contributing computing power to this scientific network called Blink. So like I bought a bunch of computers off eBay and started like contributing as much computing power as I could to Blink and um, yeah, collecting as much XRP as I could. It was, uh, it was really fun. And then yeah, I eventually sold some in 2017. That was when I really had my first taste in an insane bull market back then. Yeah, that was an incredible punk, pump if you got in at 2013 and got to see that 2017, 2018 pump. Yeah, I'm sure we could talk about crypto history for uh, 
this entire episode. We are short on time, so I'm excited to get into uh, the Asteroid Protocol. Um, I've been watching it grow and develop, and uh, I was even buying roids back when you guys had the DJ Mark. I don't know if it was you guys, but someone from the community made that uh, GitHub marketplace. And then to see where it is now is, is really amazing. So what for someone brand new, what are inscriptions? What is the Asteroid Protocol? Like, what is this thing that you guys are building for someone that's just now like watching this for the first time? I'll let Redfern take that one. He's uh, he's got a passionate <laughs> way of wording that wording it. Uh, so, uh, so what are inscriptions? Um, inscriptions are basically like any form of data uh, that you could imagine. It could be a text file, JSON, HTML, video. Um, this is data that you can take and embed directly onto the Cosmos blockchain. So, um, you and you can do it permissionlessly. You don't have to have um, any sort of approval by the Cosmos side. Like you can just go out there and and put whatever you want. Um, so we've seen people inscribe anything from uh, just pictures of their garden to like uh, crypto dick bots, and like uh, we've seen skating videos. And we've seen uh, even games, which I think we're going to talk about in a minute, but. Um, yeah, it's basically uh, asteroids are a way to permanently lock data onto the Cosmos Ed blockchain uh, in a permissionless way. So we could inscribe anything on the hub. The website says here from images, videos, texts, and tokens. Asteroid protocol allows you to describe anything. And um, let's go ahead and uh, explore. So basically, uh, you wouldn't call an inscription an NFT, would you? They're different concepts. Yeah, correct. So, um, I mean, they are very similar. Uh, it's just like uh, inscriptions do things in a very specific way. Like they, they embed data um, directly on chain. NFTs are more of a, like a, the way most people think of them, they're just a, like a smart contract piece, uh, some of, some of like um, non fungible tokens. So they're they're a lot more flexible, but they're also that makes that means you don't necessarily have a standardized way of issuing NFTs on other chains. So like the data might not be on chain; it might be pointing at a centralized database or RDFS or some other place. Um, inscriptions are almost like a a more pared down type of NFT, um, if that makes sense. There's something important about the fact that uh, Bitcoin and Cosmos Hub both do not have smart contracts, correct? So uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar, there's been a massive renaissance on Bitcoin uh, through uh, Bitcoin Ortiz. And uh, this is kind of like the comparison on Cosmos Hub, correct? And the reason why uh, the, the reason why you guys chose Cosmos Hub is because there's no smart contracts baked in, correct? Yeah, correct. So you can think about, like I think about it almost like parallel architectures. So on the one hand, you have chains like Solana and Ethereum, um, or even like Neutron or um, a bunch of the smart contract compatible chains in the Cosmos. So mm -hmm. those things uh, have... NFT capabilities built into them. They have fungible token capabilities. Like they don't need inscriptions. On the other side, you have like these um, these blockchains that have like a, a really pared down feature set, and they they literally cannot support NFTs or um, fungible tokens unless you you kind of add on to them or you you develop like a protocol that sits on top of them. Soon with Bitcoin, that is the Ordinals protocol and that launched last year. And um, it's just growing by leaps and downs because you've got this really passionate community of Bitcoiners who love doing things directly on Bitcoin. Like many of them hate Solana, they hate Ethereum. They want everything to happen on Bitcoin. So it's kind of like the maxi, maxi crowd really gets into it. 
And uh, we're seeing similar things on Cosmos where you've got, you know, really passionate people who have been like running validators on Cosmos Hub or using Cosmos uh, for years, many years. And they've never been able to like have culture or have like NFTs or tokens. And all of a sudden they can now with Astro. That was going to be my uh, side question I thought of when I was listening to your talk, because how has, when you guys announced that you have, were coming to build on the Cosmos Hub and not like from when you announced and to where you are now, how has the Adam community welcomed you, accepted you? Have people been excited about what you guys are building? Because I've been in Adam since 2021, and one of the complaints has always been, well, there's not that much you could do on the Cosmos Hub. And from what I've seen from the outside looking in and also looking at the data is the number of transactions have gone up insane. So the amount of activity happening on the Cosmos Hub, especially when you guys first launched, I think it was like ridiculous when you guys first launched. I don't know if you have the data to share. But uh, obviously, if I was an Atom holder, well, I am an Atom holder, so I look at this as awesome because there's more transactions, more, you know, activity happening, more fees, everything that I think is, how, how has everyone else been, like, welcoming you guys? Yeah, I think uh, initially, like, my, my personal concern was always, like, you know, we're adding a bunch of data to the to the hub. Validators will have to get some more storage and and things like that. So um, there there was that concern in the back of our minds just before for launching, and then once it actually got out there and people started using it, like the reception was the opposite. Like we got almost no negativity. Everyone was just super excited about you know doing something new, trying something out. Um, which was really great to see. Um, like, uh, the, the, yeah, like you mentioned, the first few days, like a thousand transactions in a single block, minting tokens and things. It was, it was pretty insane. And seeing like the amount of fees being accrued to validators and uh, Adam stakers, um, I think uh, there was a, a report. I'll find it now that showed like it's it's way beyond a hundred thousand dollars already um which is amazing and um yeah the reception was amazing at, at the beginning and as we kind of continued going um everyone's been super supportive uh, we spoke to the uh, adam accelerator dow i'll let red phone fill you in on that side um but yeah they were very did supportive you, did you guys just get a grant from them yes yes we did and uh, I'll let I'll let Redphone. He's got uh, he's got the details on that one. But also with the the latest Cosmos Hub upgrade, uh, they moved to the Cosmos SDK uh, forty seven version, which had uh, some new, uh, not really protections, but new implementations of the section of a transaction we used to inscribe content on that would have broken like the way we do things, and reached out to them had a bit of a chat, they were more than happy to go and implement the stuff that we need so that Asteroid can continue to function on the hub. And it's essentially now part of the Cosmos hub. It's there in the code. It's going to be there for a very, very long time, um, which was great to see, um, you know, getting support from the developers and like the very core team. Um, what well, was fantastic to see. Wow. That's uh Really awesome to hear. So um, I guess the next thing, unless Redphone, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just quickly on the grant piece. Um, the, the reception by Cosmos Hub itself, like the devs there, the kind of supporting ecosystem around it has, has blown me away. I mean, I think when Donovan and I kind of were, were brainstorming on this and when Asteroids was just an idea, um, we really thought it'd be kind of a fun weekend project. We'd crank it out. Um, but now, now it's like morphed into um, something that I think could have huge impact and, and implications for Cosmos Hub. And seeing their core devs like uh, help 
helpless, like Donovan was talking about that upgrade that they just did, basically enshrines asteroids, like it, it protects them and, and makes them a part of the, the core code base um, so that they can continue on in, in perpetuity, which is really exciting. And then uh, we also get a huge boost from, from the Atom Accelerator DAO, which gave us a grant to, to keep building stuff out on here. Um, I think they're super excited about it, and I feel like it's um, it's this piece that was kind of missing from Cosmos Hub. We had um, you know a very performant network, but we didn't have culture. We didn't have like excitement and joy and playfulness, and uh, that's what we're trying to bring to the hub. And, and it's, I think people are embracing it. Amazing uh, how well uh, everyone's coming together to embrace it. Because if I remember correctly, uh, I'm not a part of this community, but um, I remember when the Bitcoin ordinators came out, there was kind of a split of people who thought it was good for Bitcoin, people who didn't think it was, good, people who loved the idea, people who hated the idea. It was great to see Cosmos uh, number one have the technology to do all this at like low fees and handle so many transactions per second with all the great tech, and then a community come behind this. Here's the next question though, because this is what you'll see on Twitter, and also people have asked me this because I've been buying little bits of roids, uh, and for a while, like. All of us had no clue, would there ever be utility to this? Is it just a collectible? Because the first ever inscription on the hub, it was your guys, like the team behind the the project, uh, release roids. I, I want to talk about the fair launch of that as well. But um, you guys just released a groundbreaking thread, and it's going to make a lot of people like myself even more confident to... Uh, keep buying roids because now you posted the use case of roids correct so you have some kind of um let me pull up the thread can we yeah, talk about but... kind of like uh, a lot of people what i was saying a lot of people on twitter would say okay well like the gas we're using atom token to basically do a lot of the activity on asteroid protocol what's the point of roids so will you guys be able to kind of answer that for us today we have this tw twitter thread and then we also have this and it mentioned some uh there is no ro ro roadmap it's a roids powered rage map it's how we take asteroids from a niche to the world's most radical experiment. Um, well, there's more than just about the roids token, but can you touch it? We have uh, also, you guys launched the game too, which you need roids, but like, will there be utility with roids? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think there's like two pieces. So one is this ridge map is... Um, just our best thinking, like uh, where we think the protocol should be heading. Um, and we're going to release this wage map like in phases. So uh, this only includes like a bit of it. So in the coming days and weeks, we're going to announce the other two thirds. And actually, those other two thirds, we talked a lot more about words. So initially, this wage map just has like uh, mostly things to do with like how we want to improve the NFT side of things. But yeah, the, there's this huge component to, to roids and making them useful. And I think it all starts with the bridge, like being able to to bridge uh, roids and other CFT20s to other teams where they could then be used in EMMs. That just unlocks like so much usability that, that I would love to see on even on a website in the future, like, you know, being able to to buy and sell things with words seems like everyone would love that. Seems like something we should have. Um, and then also like if fast roads is going to be sustainable, like it, it it really could use things like governance and and um, staking and and things that other smoke contract teams have. So we would like to introduce that stuff over time, but um, that would obviously like give utility to it. Not just Lloyds, but all of the tokens. So we're definitely thinking about that. And um, I think it all starts with the bridge. And that, that bridge map should, should get into a lot more in the coming weeks. And I would definitely encourage everyone to follow us on Twitter and, and just keep an eye on it. So I'm on the website. If you go to the website, uh, inscriptions are 
kind of like what a lot of people know as uh, what looks like NFTs. Then you click on tokens and you can see the roids, asteroids, inscription. And uh, you could send it, sell it, trade it. Trading is where you go to purchase it. You can see right now it's a uh, very, you know, uh, unique marketplace. Uh, basically, uh, people have to sell roids in batches, correct? This is where yeah. you could go purchase roids. And what you're saying is, uh, so Cosmos Hub doesn't have these smart contracts. And what is going to be possible with the bridge is we could bridge uh, the roids token to something like uh, Neutron. And uh, you guys are part of Ask Report, so I'm assuming go to Ask Report. And then the roids token will have uh, the advanced Cosmosm functionalities, be able to use it in liquidity pools, AMMs, uh, have more DeFi capabilities with these roids tokens. So uh, yeah. not yeah. so hard yeah, to exactly. buy and sell like right now. It's more liquid, I guess. So that's going to be one of the major utilities, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you nailed it. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, absolutely. And um, with a bridge, you'd be able to bridge any of these CFT twenties, uh, but not, not just, just Roids. Roids. Yeah, wow. and with that comes interesting things with like DAO, DAO, and enterprise uh, stuff on Terra. We've seen people very interested in using these CFT twenties to start building a DAO out. Um, you know, all of those things become possible once we have the bridge. So what I think is one of the coolest things about this is uh, the fair launch ability. I think that people are going to start resonating with uh, more fairer systems as we move, uh, as consciousness kind of shifts. Uh, yeah. Why are you guys bullish on the fair launch approach? Yeah. I think, uh, sorry, right, yeah. Uh, let's see. Why am I bullish fair launch? I think um, I think it's it's like yeah, that's why people get into crypto. You know, like they want to eliminate the gatekeepers. They want to eliminate like the, the retarded. Uh, sorry, I probably shouldn't use that word. The uh, archaic idea of like um, uh, like being an accredited investor in TradFi and like you know. You can only invest in like these private companies uh, via hedge funds and stuff. Like it is such a like turd size segregated, and so um, uh, it's like totally built up to be to enable the rich to get richer. Um, crypto is is like a philosophical inversion of that. It's um, that's what attracted me to this this idea that anyone can participate. You don't like have to have a, a uh, NDA from Wharton or something, you can, you can just come and use it and um, fuck your resume and fuck your credentials. It doesn't matter. What matters is are your contributions and, and your beliefs and um, where you put your capital. So, yeah, it just philosophically, I love their launches. And um, they're also, like, in a weird way, like, they're a lot more regulatory friendly because you don't have to. You're not selling anything, so it's not like it could be labeled a security. So, I think that that protects a lot of the the creators' mean coins and um, enables them to get get adoption. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think I heard you you mentioned that. Uh, I thought that was. I'm I'm always researching, and that's part of my research. Like, I don't want to be involved in something that one day the SEC could come down and say this is a security and you've mentioned that the fair launch approach uh, could possibly be uh, something that is a lot more uh, safe and compliant which is awesome i just looked at the time uh, we really don't have much time yet and there's something really important i want to share while we have donovan with us because it, as we're talking about uh, utility and you know more use cases coming to roids Cause I have seen a bunch of people use this fair launch approach to like do whitelist for NFTs already. Like people are like experimenting, figuring out how to use this new tech. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Donovan posted the other day, we all went crazy that he built the first <laughs> ever game on the Cosmos hub and uh, you need roids to play. So you need 69 roids to play this game. Nice. 
Uh, I played it, and what's cool about it is if you uh, you could win your 69 roids back. So I'm going to pull up the game actually right now. So um, you basically mint a runner. I, I, if you want to talk about it real quick while I get all set up, I'm going to mint yep. my runner while Absolutely. you're talking. Yeah, yeah. So basically um, the idea – well, the idea for this game started as something completely different, and it might be like a – Roid Runner Season 2 or something. Um, but So I'm not going to share too much of the original idea, but um, I wanted to do something something new. And I kind of wanted to... One of the things that Red and I have spoken about a lot about is like, because we don't have smart contracts for Asteroids, right? If you have any kind of development experience or anything, you can come and build on Asteroids. And what I wanted to show here is you can go and build a game on top of asteroids and by just using standard web two technologies you don't need to know anything about contracts even though the experience is a bit different um you know you can come and build anything and uh, by using like the roids token i wanted to experiment because a lot of people have been asking about like how can i use my cfd20 to do something else with it um so i went and experimented with that a bit kind of figured out how to make sure the transfer has been done and then inscribe on top of that and um, kind of lay the foundations to to help people get to a point there um, but then yeah then uh, once you've minted your roids uh, your roid runner um, you there's actually two inscriptions happening in the background the main nft and then the animated character that represents that nft in game um, it's the same design. If it's got a hat, it's going to have a hat in the game. If it has eyes, it will have eyes in the game. Um, so they are married and kind of a, a parent and child relationship, which I'll get into if you want to. Um, but yeah, then you play the game. If you collect all of your 69 roids, you get a payment back of your 69 roids and uh, you yes, you have one hour to do it in, and uh, if you've played, there's a, there's another thing that people might not realize. Like, if you've played the game, and at the end of the day, we have some roids in a pool for people that did not make all of their roids back. The roids in that pool gets distributed to everyone that played that day. Um, I think yesterday we had. Uh, 40 something unique while it's played the game uh, with different uh, runners and things and we distributed some 62 roids to each one of those wallets so if you played yesterday you probably received a bit of extra roids dang i played a couple days ago you can see my high score right here so i already i have two minted road runners my high score yeah. is only a thousand and fifteen you can look at the leaderboard and you can compete yeah. with everybody else that minted so the number one top dog right now has about 3800 points so anybody that's watching this can do you beat the number one road runner so it's uh tough. you can see here my high, i have already collected 69 out of 69 roids on this player and I just mentioned this yep. one live with you guys. You can see I have 58 minutes left. So after this call, I'm going to hustle. But let me kind of show you guys real quick because it's actually pretty fun and addicting. And the music choice you have behind. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I talked to a Red Phone before you hopped on and yeah. I let him know. I asked him a question like, do you have this the same artist that's drawing all your artwork? And he said, yes. And I was like, I, I, um, I just really told him how much I love the whole aesthetic and vibe that you guys are creating overall as a brand. Like the whole vibe is really, uh, it's cool. I don't know how to explain it, but like it's its own thing. And it all kind of, every artwork you guys put out looks different, but at the same time, you kind of, it all seems like under the same brand. So, but also yeah. with the Roid Runner, I'll play it. The, the music is pretty cool too. So let me share my computer <laughs> sound. So this is what the without game without really revealing like. my age. Like the the eight bit music is kind of what I grew up with. So uh... <laughs> so this is the game. You go like this, and these coins are your Roids. So you got to collect sixty nine of them.
yeah. Exactly. How do I turn the sound off? Okay, oh, yeah. I realized that earlier today. Here we go. To turn the sound off as well. But uh, <laughs> that's the first ever game there. built on the Cosmos Hub. We have the crater here, all powered by Roids and uh, Asteroid yeah. Protocol. So uh, in five years, Cosmos Hub had no NFTs. And with the launch of Asteroid, they have 40,000 NFTs, games, videos, collections, tokens. And um, yeah, you guys have done a lot in just the past 10 weeks. Um, anything else important that uh, the audience should be aware of uh, that we need to know um, before we end this call? Yeah, I would just um, encourage anyone that wants to build on this protocol to, to reach out to us. We've got, we've got a grants program. We've got a dev chat and telegram. We've got um, uh, open lines to us anytime you, anyone needs. Um, I think like my vision longer term for this roots is really the really like gets uh to the point that i don't think inscriptions are like a passing fad i think that they're kind of a parallel architecture for for blockchains so you've got the you've got the ethereum and solana path and then you've got the path of stuff like bitcoin and cosmos Hub, where it's a, it's more this hybrid um between like everything on chain and and uh and then Chains like Bitcoin and Cosmos Hub, where most of it's on chain, but then you could also do some some off chain processing through these indexers. So I do think that inscriptions are just they're going to be a key part of our future. And if that's the case, um, I feel like this is just the very dawn, the very beginning of of a completely different Cosmos Hub. So um, yeah, anyone that wants to build on it, anyone that uh, wants to create stuff. Please hop in our Telegram and and we will uh, work with you however we can to to help you uh, build on this because um, yeah it won't go anywhere without without contributors and creators and builders so yeah but it's our main focus uh, come join us. So um, let me pull up uh, that was Redphone speaking. You can follow Redphone at Redphone Crypto on X. I could also uh, he has really uh, amazing. Uh, newsletter so he has a newsletter uh this is uh separate this is your own personal um basically crypto storytelling and revealing um basically your thoughts on the market future trends uh you guys could join this a uh, newsletter and then for asteroid protocol uh they have a telegram uh, is that the best place to get like in contact with you guys and get involved in the community? Yeah, for sure. Donathan, do you do you have anything uh like what are you excited about the future? Uh, anything you like to share? Yeah, I think uh really excited about the bridge. Um I think that's going to unlock a lot of lot of cool stuff and of course the race of the rage map coming out. And uh, you know, there's there's still so much to build. Um, one of the one of the greatest things I think about inscriptions is, at the moment, the entire history of the Cosmos Hub is off chain in the forums, right? And I think it would be amazing if things like the forums move on chain and that history is preserved forever. Um, you know, if those current servers get hacked, you know, it's gone. Um, and that is one of the most passionate parts of the Cosmos Hub and making sure those kinds of things gets get preserved, I think, uh, is a, an exciting idea. And that, you know, there's we can still build messaging systems. We can build there's whatever you think of. We can we can build that. And uh, really excited about the next ten weeks at least. Um, and uh, I hope. Uh, well, sorry. Um, thanks for all the support. You know, uh, everyone hopping in, making inscriptions, doing tokens, playing games. Really, really, really glad, glad to see everyone kind of enjoying it as much as we are. I could ask one more question before we sign out. Um, so besides like collections and photos, like I'm sure someone could store their family photos also as an inscription. But I, I was just thinking like, 
this technology is really amazing because uh, like you said, you guys have lost, you could have lost uh, Cosmos history, but imagine how much history we've lost uh, already throughout humanity. Like the, uh, the, the library of Alexandria got burned down and all this, these books, basically all this knowledge got wiped away. Uh, yeah. This could be amazing if people could actually store history and knowledge on a distributed system that basically could be uh, stored forever. And yeah. uh, I think that could be a cool, like, I think this can be very important going forward. So uh, everybody have an awesome day. Uh, thank you guys for spending time with me. And uh, you guys are welcome back anytime as uh, the project progresses. If you want to come back and give updates, I uh, would love to have you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for inviting us. Okay, everybody yeah. have a good day. Peace. See you guys. Cheers.